This is the Cool Photo Tools Podcast, episode number 56, February 29th, 2016. Are you sick of trying to learn all the new photo software? Are you tired of hearing about the next big thing in photography? Well, neither are we. Welcome to Cool Photo Tools with Jay Beerstorf and Rhonda Spencer. Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash coolphototools. Good morning and welcome, cool heads. Welcome to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. My name is Jay Pierstorf. And Rhonda Spencer is on vacation this week, so I'm having to pull the entire load by myself. No small feat. But I think I'm up to the task. Fortunately, we have lots of interesting stuff going on this week with the uh, cool photo tools. People are uh, releasing new gear, new devices, uh, new techniques and things. I think we've got a lot of interesting stuff to show you. This is going to be a fun show. We've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. So I'm going to switch over right now to my computer screen and I'm going to show you this device. This is the Lineage Labs Bevy Smart Photo System. And this is a one terabyte and this comes in blue or black. And I'm going to move this on the screen up here a little bit to show you. And let's see if we can make this a little bigger. These are about 300 bucks from Amazon. And this thing look, looks just like a little computer box. There's not really much to it, except that uh, it's, um, it just, you know, it has like a, a couple of USB ports in it. And you can, ins you can take your entire photo collection and you can store it to this hard drive. So this is like, if you don't want to mess with the cloud per se, you don't want to have all your photos up in the cloud, you can get them to, uh, to install on these. Now, this, is, uh, this started out, I believe, as a Kickstarter project, a product. And this, um, I haven't had one of these in my hands to play with, but supposedly it, uh, it's very easy for the whole family to organize and collect their photos in one specific spot that's in your house. So this would be good if everybody has a camera phone, everybody's taking pictures, and you want to save those pictures, have them uh, able to be accessed for posterity or, or, or your family, pass them on to the family and whatnot. This particular uh, device might just be able to let you do that. So uh, they have a little video on here and we can kind of just run that in the background to show you. But they're, um, this, this is something kind of interesting. Uh, we've seen kind of similar things. It's kind of like network storage. But again, this is set up to really address even the mobile devices in your family. So it's a, a small little, um, little compact device. Uh, it's, um, it looks like it's about uh, four inch square, uh, maybe by three inches high. It has a couple USB ports on it and uh, works with your home um, your home network. All right, so next up here, I've got something to show you. This got my attention. This is the Iris Phone Lens. And we'll put all the links to these in the show notes. So if you are, are trying to remember what I was talking about today, uh, you can just go to coolphototools.com and click on podcast and it gives you the latest episodes of the podcast and there's the, for each episode has its own set of notes so that you can look down, you can click on these links and you can remember the stuff that we were talking about. Now this one is from our friends at Photo Jojo and we've seen these kind of things before. This is a, a supplementary lens system that you can put on your camera phone, your smartphones. So, you know, that's one of the big problems with smartphones is that they only have the one lens that's built in. Typically, it's a wide angle lens. And so, you know, you're not uh, um, able to use uh, different lenses, so, so to speak. And so here, this kind of addresses that. Now, this is the Photo Jojo Iris, and you can get this from photojojo.com. And they have a kind of a unique design because what has caused the big problem with these, and these work good, you know I mean? These are a good solution if you want to put a telephoto or a, or a macro lens uh, or a wider, a fisheye type lens, which is the three that they actually make in this one. If you want to uh, put those on your smartphone, the big problem has always been that you have to uh, take the case off your smartphone. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to have a case on my smartphone because 
sometimes I might drop it. Coming out of my pocket, uh, you know, sometimes you fumble finger it and, and drop it to the ground. And if you've got, if you've got a case on your smartphone and you have uh, one of those uh, screen protectors, you know, those clear things that you apply to the screen, you have a pretty good chance that uh, your smartphone is going to be just fine, not sustain any damage from a moderate drop to the ground, you know, even sometimes on concrete. So, yeah, you really want to have those. So, we're looking at this, uh, this particular device here, and if I can show you what the difference is on this. Okay, so you can see this series uh, has, has a little adapter that is kind of a uh, an elastic cord that goes around kind of diagonally the edges of your smartphone and the lens is attached to this and then this also it works out to be a case so you can put a case around your lenses even so here's the deal you can attach these lenses these supplementary lenses to your smartphone and you don't have to take your case off it just kind of elastic bands around the, uh, the smartphone itself long enough for you to take the picture and then you're good to go so that's pretty cool I'm thinking those are uh, that's really kind of an innovation uh, something that we haven't seen before and that really that's one of the biggest reasons people don't use these is because they generally come with a custom case you have to take your case off and then put that one on in order for it to work so that's a, that really solves that solution right there these are photo jojo's iris lenses and any android ios um, apple phones all your smartphones are going to work with all of them because of the way that they uniquely attach so good on you photo jojo that's awesome all right, one other thing right, I, discovered I discovered in searching, yeah, around, searching around Amazon, because I'm an Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime member, and I buy a lot, a lot of stuff from Amazon. Amazon. I know I'm completely alone in that, right? You don't buy anything from Amazon. I know our cool photo heads that uh, listen to the podcast, they buy a lot of stuff from Amazon, because it's very convenient. You know, there's, uh, there's not a problem with doing that. It, they get it right to your door in just a couple days. So it's a great place to shop, especially for photo gear. Anyway, one of the things that I discovered on Amazon was this particular product here. And this is called, um, these are, are a number of different kind of cables. And this is by a company called Fuse Chicken. Fuse Chicken, I know, F-U-S-E, and then chicken. Uh, and these are armored cables. So these cables, let's see if I can take a look at the, uh, the lightning cable here, for example. We can get an up close look at it here. Uh, they have a picture with a hammer. Uh, it, these are steel uh, armored cables. They have, um, they, they claim that they're virtually indestructible. The industrial grade, flexible, high strength steel wrapped cables. So these are not cheap, and I give these away, but on the other hand, if you are in a situation where you need to get a cable that is uh, very rugged, ruggedized, you might take a look at these by Fuse Chicken. How's that sound for a, a, re a memorable name? You don't remember anything else about the podcast today. You're going to go home and you're going to go, yeah, I remember he was talking about some armored cables and they were by a company called Fuse Chicken. All right, so I'm wondering if that started out because all the good URLs are gone, <laughs> right? So, so they're just like, well, if we can't get a good one, let's just go ahead and get one that's memorable. Okay, well, I, I could see that. All right, so... Um, Let's take a look here at our next item coming up. See how fast I'm going through these without Rhonda, you know, because not 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 to say anything bad about Rhonda. Um, I just don't have anybody to discuss it with, right? So I just, it just comes out and I'm just giving you my two cents worth on this. And then there's no second opinion here. It's just like, it's just, it's just my way or the highway. So. I don't know if I like that or not. I can't wait for Rhonda to get back from vacation. I need a little, I need a little truth checking or, uh, uh, or whatnot uh, uh, coming back at me from that. So hang in there. We'll, she'll be back. All right, so next up on this, we have got another product. Uh, oh, it's not a product. This is actually um, this is from a website called the Cooperative of Photography, and their URL is cooph.com. This is a pretty cool website, and I discovered these guys the other day uh, when I was uh, kind of looking around here. And the, uh, this is, they have a video. They have a bunch of stuff on their website. It's worth checking out. You know, I don't know if you guys ever go to the coolphototools.com blog. And I publish a, uh, a blog and comes out uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday. And I keep it short, you know, because I know your time is, is limited. And you don't want to, so, and I try not to reinvent the wheel. If I reference something that's really interesting and really cool, then I'm going to go 
just, you know, I'm going to go, look, you got to go here and take a look at this. This is something that you want to see. And I don't have to, if, if it's already, if it's a great article and it's already been written, I'm just going to send you there. You know, so hopefully you appreciate that. And, uh, and think of me when you order from Amazon. Click back to coolphototools.com. Click on one of our affiliate links and uh, order a bunch of stuff. And then I'll get, uh, I'll get enough money to buy a couple of uh, replacement lens caps or, or something like that. So appreciate that. Anyway, back to where we were. Cooperative of Photography has this, uh, the history of photography. And this is a video. I'm going to just run a little bit of it here, but I want you to go to their to their website and take a look at it. It's about five minutes long, and it's very good. You know, it really, if you can shorten the the history of photography to five minutes, these guys did an awesome job. You know, I mean, it just uh, it really sums it up. So that's the cooperative of photography. There's lots of other interesting things on their site as well. So um, they have uh, they got lots of stuff. You want to go check them out. All right. We're moving right along here. How are we doing with the time? Oh, third of the way through. I'm, st I'm still on schedule. We've got a ton of stuff, so if I'm going fast through this, uh, no worries because, uh, you know, that uh, we, we've got a bunch to cover today. All right, so did you all see this uh, on, the, uh, on the news here the other day? And this is of interest to photographers. This is the University of Southampton. And they came up with a little deal called... Uh, uh, a way to store data on, and we're always worried about storing data. We, this is now we've been worried about storing photographs for a long, long time. About you know a, a couple of minutes after we discovered photography, we're like, ooh, how long are these going to last? Are are we going to be able to share these with future generations? And this is every time we change formats, every time we change uh, the type, the way that we save and create photography, then we still come up with the same problem. How are we going to be able to save this? And color photography, particularly when it came out, uh, you know, when it came out for uh, consumer use in the 50s and 60s, that was particularly fragile. And you see a lot of images that were taken in that time period have have already faded away or have changed color. Even ones that were stored well uh, often are not uh, not as permanent as we hoped they would be. So I know uh, a lot of the companies were kind of aiming for 30 years, figuring that most people, you know, if, if their photographs hung out 30 years and, and were pretty good, stored properly, they were okay with that, particularly with a fragile technology like, um, like color photography was. Black and white photography uh, with its uh, silver imaging technology was much more durable, properly processed and stored uh, silver images, black and white on uh, on paper, traditionally processed, could last 200 years or more. And so that's kind of when we see the, the term archival. We think, yeah, 200 years is pretty good. That's about, you know, that's all we can really expect out of photography. Sometimes they last longer, uh, way cool. Sometimes they don't. Um, but anyway, so getting back down to this uh, this article here on the eternal 5D data storage. And what they've done here at the uh, University of Southampton is that they've come up with a way to use a laser and uh, digitize a, a, a huge amount of data onto a glass disc. Now this is a special kind of glass disc and they uh, they claim that, that they can put on this little glass disc and there's a picture of on the website here of a person holding it. Um, it's about an inch and a half in diameter, um, maybe a eighth of an inch thick and it just seems like a just a glass disc and that you can see there's a little image on it and there's a big title of course but most of the data on the disc is uh, not really visible and they're claiming that uh, 360 terabytes of disc data capacity and thermal stability up to a thousand degrees centigrade so and and again a claim for virtually unlimited lifetime at room temperature uh, and they're going to narrow that lifetime down. They're going to hedge that a little bit and go, well, 13.8 billion years, which should be enough lifetime for most anybody. So, yeah, good on you guys. Uh, hopefully that this uh, technology will be uh, affordable. You know, when uh, we could do this, we could take our, uh, I don't have 360 terabytes of disk data laying around. Uh, I know Rhonda only has about uh, 20 or 30 terabytes. Um, I probably don't even have that, but uh, so you know, just as kind of an experiment, I, uh, I wrote to these guys. So I had these guys take all of Rhonda's data 
and put them on a glass disc. I was just going to give it to her as a little present like that. I know if you can see this on the camera here, if I can hold this up here. Um, like this little glass disc. And, and so, so this is good for 13.8 billion, billion years. years. What could happen to a glass disc? Let's move on. All right, here's something else that's kind of cool. This is uh, this is the uh, that the hamburgerphotospots.de website, and again, you can check all these with a link to our uh, blog on coolphototools.com. And this is is not new, but I thought I would bring this up to you because we haven't uh, talked about this in a little while, and it, and it and it keeps coming up, and it's it's pretty cool. And so what this is is um, a a cheat card. So you can go to this website. And this uh, this gentleman has come up with a uh, a very cool little kind of a pocket sized um, it's a it's like a business card you could print it out would be sufficient and it has um, uh, this would be really good for beginners so it kind of has stuff that you can um, helps you remember you know when you're starting out you're like oh uh, lens openings so. The bigger the number, the smaller the opening, and which which shutter speed is it that freezes action? Is that a number like one half, or is it one four thousand? And you know, as you know, as you get experienced in photography, I I know this stuff comes naturally to you, and you're like, oh yeah, I got that. But as a beginner, the numbering system and how things work can be very daunting or confusing. And so you're if if you're at that level then you can download this little cheat card and you can print it out and uh, it helps you remember those things. It has graphics on it that show you um, exactly what you uh, what you might need to look at as far as uh, here I'll zoom in a little bit on that for you to look at and you can see that you know you've got uh, it has very clear picture illustrations of, of the lens openings and what the numbers are what they look like and it has little graphics of uh, shutter speeds and it, it has kind of a little simple graphic graphic of a runner and as he is running with a slower shutter speed he gets kind of blurry and fuzzed out and it also uh, shows you ISO so that ISO uh, as you get higher numbers in ISO that there's more uh, noise or grain that appears it's very nicely done very uh, very well represented and it's uh, it's easy uh, easy to download there's an English version and a German version uh, I, I don't think it really matters which one you got because it's pretty obvious which is which is which. Mostly it's illustrated, so it, it doesn't matter. But that's at the blog dot hamburger dot or hamburger dash photospots dot de. And again, just just, just click, click on, on our our blog. blog. The, the show notes will, will take, take you right to it. To it. All, right. All right. How are we how doing, are doing for time? time? Still, Still good. good. Okay. okay. Let's, let's keep, keep going, going here. So let's take a look at. Um, these two new cameras, there's been a lot of camera announcements and and I certainly uh, don't have uh, a time to keep you all completely up to date on everything here. But if we take a look at some of these, uh, Canon launched um, uh, a new, well, two new compact power shots, their G7X Mark II and the PowerShot SX720 HS digital cameras. Now, the, uh, the G7X probably is going to be a little more... Uh, interesting to professional photographers um, just because it's it is a, it delivers a little more uh, quality it's got 20 megapixel sensor and it, uh, it this is a, a camera where the lens doesn't come off you know you've got a it's um, the camera uh, powershot G series is uh, kind of like a little rangefinder camera they have a the lens is a 24 to 100 millimeter equivalent and that's you know, and that's their optical zoom, and uh, and everything is pretty standard on there. Uh, they have um, a pretty good size, what they call their one-inch sensor in that. Of course, it's got built-in Wi-Fi, and and they're starting to add uh, NFC or near-field communications, so that you can talk to your smartphones uh, very quickly, uh, very easily. And they do this. This is a raw shooter. Yay, good on you, Canon. Okay, so it does shoot raw for those of you that like to do uh, stuff in Photoshop or Lightroom. The uh, raw capabilities are um, are really are really useful, especially in some of these small cameras where maybe you don't have that much time or way to get the exposure exactly accurate for whatever reason. Sometimes having a raw file can really help you process that. 
And so uh, I pretty much don't like to buy cameras anymore that don't have some raw capability. Even my camera phone has raw capability. So Canon, come on. I know, and we've got some, a story coming up that the uh, smartphone uh, companies are, uh, are really eating the camera manufacturer's lunch. So I think as long as the camera manufacturers um, should be aware of that, um, try not to let them get any features over on you. Why give somebody an excuse to just say, you know what, the picture I'm taking with my camera phone is just as good as what I could get with a point and shoot or with a power shot or whatever. So I, you know, it's A, probably not true, but B, I think uh, camera manufacturers really need to be uh, fairly aggressive in not letting that happen. You know, you need to uh, step it up and uh, let them know that, uh, hey, you know, we've got features on here that are, are not going to be duplicatable with a camera phone. Zoom lens is one of the big ones, all right? That's that's a biggie. Okay, so then also uh, the SX720 uh, is a, a little smaller camera, uh, can fit in your pocket, um, and that has uh, um, a little bigger zoom range on it here. They all shoot movies, you know, they shoot video now. These these cameras are shooting, both of them shoot uh, 1080p, uh, which is, you know, is, is high def. That's pretty much standard. Uh, you know, again, there's a lot of smartphones that are shooting 4K resolution, so kind of makes me wonder when, when camera manufacturers come out with uh, with cameras that are, are are by and large, you know, kind of kind of unremarkable. You know, it seems like uh, uh, we should be a little bit. Um, I, I think I would be more worried about it if I was a camera manufacturer. I wouldn't want smartphones to be scooping me on features, particularly when everybody's going to have a smartphone. It's just, uh, I think that's, that's, it's worrisome. Okay, but enough about that. So let's so take let's a look at our next thing, thing coming up here. Up here. Uh, next next uh, item, item that I want to tell, tell you about, about this, this is a company, is a company that, uh, that contacted, contacted me and said, hey, how come we're not on Cool Photo Tools? tools. Our, our stuff is cool. cool. And, and right, right they are. are. I didn't, didn't realize there's, there's a lot of stuff I'm just not aware of. I mean, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of things out there and, and more all the time. And this, uh, again, this is not a product that we haven't uh, completely not seen before. But this is from a company. This is called PhotoPie. And they're at PhotoPieBackdrops.com. And this is something that studio photographers uh, will be very, very interested in. Um, or, or those of you may be thinking you might want to start a studio. And these are backdrops that are cloth, and they have different varieties of cloth. And then you can put these in your studio, and they uh, can then be, uh, you can make photographs with these as the backdrop. So you never have to leave your studio. You don't have to do any Photoshop work. Um, these are a great and interesting background. And this, again, this is an old concept, right? You know, this, as soon as we had portrait photographers, they were having uh, painted backgrounds. Well, these, these backgrounds are digital, and you can even have your own photograph. If you've got your own something that you want to make into a background, these guys will do that for you. You send them the file, they will, uh, they'll print the background out and send it back to your studio. But the thing that strikes me about the usefulness of these particularly is event photography. If you have ever shot, uh, a senior prom or a, you know, a high school dance or an event like that where you have couples uh, coming up and want their picture taken or, or, or buying uh, prom pictures or, or package pictures. And so you might shoot, shoot uh, you know, 20 to several hundred couples uh, during the evening. And usually the dance has some kind of a theme. Uh, and so this theme would then, uh, you can find some of these uh, backgrounds that, uh, that are really really quite good. And in fact, one of the other things that, uh, that is interesting about uh, PhotoPie is that they do have uh, tutorials on their site. They show you how to work with these backgrounds. And this is something that maybe a lot of uh, modern photographers uh, maybe have never worked with, uh, with this type of a background before. And this, uh, this will give you some ideas. Just go, it's worth going to their site and just looking at the tutorials on how to shoot these and how to make these backdrops. Some of these look incredibly convincing. You know, when back in the day, you know, when the, the photographers were, were first using some of these uh, backdrops, they were a little flaky. I mean, they were pretty much obvious that they were, they were hand-painted. But the idea was to create an attractive background 
that that was easy for the photographer to set up, could work in his studio, and didn't really detract from the subject, didn't take away uh, from the uh, from the the family or the or the people that were having their pictures taken. Now, these backdrops from photo photopiebackdrops.com. Some of these are full length where they actually, you can cove them where they drop uh, from the top of the ceiling and go all the way to the floor and then you stand on them. And if you add a few props into there, you know, if you add some three-dimensional props, you can, can, you can get some very convincing images. Uh, again, um, they're, not, they're not paying me to say this, but I have used backdrops in the past and I think this is something that really, for the right type of photography, this is something really powerful that you could add to your arsenal. Um, ways to, to come up with some very, very excellent and creative images. So take a look at them. They, uh, they have some really nice stuff there. Uh, PhotopiBackdrops.com All right, up next. Well, you know, we, and as camera phones become more prevalent and they're just there everywhere. And why wouldn't they be? Because they're very, very handy. But, and we were talking a little bit about this earlier, how camera phones are often, often competing, competing with, with camera, camera manufacturers. manufacturers. You know, they've really, it's really uh, taken the, the sales uh, of point and shoot or, or smaller, or simpler cameras, cameras uh, off the market, the market because your camera phone does it. Does it. And, and they, they do it, they do a good job. job. So, and plus, plus they're connected. You know, you can wire that, that uh, picture into uh, Facebook, Facebook or uh, Instagram. Instagram. You can share with, with your friends and family. And family. They're convenient, they're, they're connected, uh, and, they're, and they're just getting better. better. You know, the images, images that you can take with a camera phone are, are getting really, really good. good. So, so it's, uh, it's not really a surprise that, that we're, we're seeing, seeing, um, we're seeing, seeing this happen. happen. So uh, the, uh, the, the mobile, mobile um, show, show can't, can't think of its name right now, the mobile mobile Congress show is on. Uh, here last, last week. week. And, and so, so all, all the companies, companies got out there and uh, introduced a lot of new camera phones, or smartphones, mostly with cameras. And LG came up with one called the, the G5. And so I'm looking at their website here. And the LG G5, you know, it, it has a little, um, it has a couple of tricks. They have some accessories that they've designed to work specifically with their LG G5 phone. One of the things that they have is they have a, a uh, the bottom kind of, slots out and you can easily put another battery in if you need to change batteries in the middle of the day. Uh, also accessories. And one of the things that people, maybe if you're using your camera a lot for vacation, you might run the battery down because you're taking a ton of pictures. And so they've got actually a camera grip that you can attach to the, to the LG smartphone. It kind of has a, a bump in the back. It adds an additional battery. It adds some controls so that you can use to uh, take pictures. And you can see it here on the screen. Again, you can go to lg.com and take a look at this, or you can link right to, uh, you can go to the to Cool Photo Tools and look at our show notes, and you'll see it right there as well. Um, so they have a, um, you know, they're touting they have a wide-angle lens. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, don't, <laughs> pretty much all camera phones do. But here's something kind of interesting. Uh, in the, in this, in the same genre as the Ricoh Theta cameras, those little cameras that can take photospheres, 360 degree views with one shot. Well, LG's come up with a companion for their camera phone, which is the LG 360 cam. Seems to be pretty much based on the same look or technology that we're seeing from uh, um, Ricoh and the 360 Theta. Also, they've got some VR goggles, uh, VR, uh, virtual reality, and augmented reality. We're hearing a lot of buzz on those, so those could be something we're going to keep an eye on to see, you know, how that might affect photography these days. And they've got some other features on there as well. But that was particularly interesting. I thought the uh, the camera on there that looks now they claim that you can use this camera with other phones as well. The camera, this is a freestanding device, and the and and just like the Ricoh, it does work with your smartphone so that you can see what the camera is looking at. Very difficult to set these cameras up if you can't see what they're seeing. Um, and so there's no way to really put a viewfinder on them. Your camera becomes a viewfinder. So they'll be able to communicate uh, to most any camera. Uh, I don't think that we have a word on the pricing on this particular camera yet. But we'll let you know as we uh, learn more about this. Here's, this is this something, is something very, cool. very cool. And this, and this comes, comes to us from, from our friends, friends at, at Petapixel. 
Have you ever been to the uh, Petapixel website? Well, these guys, what, you know, they, do they have a staff of 2 million people? What What is it with this website? This is one of the most awesome blogs on the internet. This is what, you know, I'm just going to take my the Cool Photo Tools blog and I'm just going to fast forward or, or not fast forward but just forward you know so when you go looking at cool photo tools you just go straight to the petapixel website i mean because you should always look at this website every they've got some very cool stuff uh and when i'm when i'm looking around you know the things that they have on their blog are like ooh, that's interesting i want to see that i want to take a look at what that is all right so this is one coming up this is a uh, this was published on February 22nd by Nick Fancher. Good on you, Nick. This is an awesome article. Okay, and he's talking about uh, a hack that you can do with your reflector. Now, everybody has these round reflectors, right? You know, they pop out like those things that you put in the windshield, you know, to uh, to, re to keep the sun out. We use a lot of those here in Arizona. But these reflectors, you know, they, they fold up, they have a little metal spring hoop in them and then they unfold and they're anywhere from you know 20 to 30 inches you can buy them in different sizes so he, this this hack describes what you do here and this and th this is a simple idea what you can do is you just cut a hole right in the middle get your scissors and cut a hole and you go, oh that's going to ruin my reflector well you can get some of these on Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks they're so amazingly inexpensive that you know, you can certainly try this, uh, and I think you'll have uh, great results with it. So, not a big hole in the middle, just, you know, one that's about four or five inches in diameter. And on the screen here, we're showing one that has a, a, a um, this is probably like a 30-inch reflector, maybe 40, I can't tell. Uh, but anyway, so there's a big hole cut in the middle, and so then you put your lens through this hole. So now, if the sun is coming over the shoulder of a person that you're taking a portrait of, then the sun hits this reflector and then uh, throws light back in to the model's face. And you can create some very nice lighting with this. You've got dimensional lighting where you've got lighting coming from two different directions because you're using a reflector. You don't have to use any fill flash or any other, any other thing besides this reflector. But this is the beauty of, uh, and I didn't think about this at first, but when you, when you take a look at this, that the beauty of this is that you can hold this reflector yourself. You don't have to have any help with it because it fits over the lens in your camera. So it just hangs there, right? It's just, it's their lightweight. So you put your camera lens through the hole and it just stays there. So, and now you can look through your camera. This is assuming you have a DSLR to do this, you know, a, a camera or a mirrorless, something that has a fairly good sized lens that would support this. You couldn't probably do this with a point and shoot uh, without some help. I mean, you could do it. But a little help would be would be there for you. But if you have a, a camera that you can, you know, that's sturdy enough, you put this reflector over it, and then you have light coming in uh, from the back side, and, uh, and then the light hits the reflector, bounces into the face of your subject, and you have some really beautiful lighting. And this is such a, a simple idea. I'm just, I'm really sad that I didn't think of it first. You know, it's just uh, <laughs> some great, great stuff on here. So that's, uh, check that out. That's the reflector hack where you cut a hole right in the middle. Well, you know what time it is. And at this point, Rhonda would say, it can't be that time already, but it is. It's that time. It's time that we have to uh, say goodbye to you till next week. And hopefully Rhonda's having a great time on her vacation. And she will be back, uh, uh, not the next episode, but the one right after that. And so uh, until then, we just uh, if you have any concerns or uh, things that you want us to talk about or stuff that you'd like to know, uh, things that, uh, that interest you, the uh, photographic questions, uh, drop us a, a, an email. You can go to coolphototools.com and just click on the contact link and that will let you fill out a form and I will get it. We read everything everybody sends us. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate uh, all the great uh, uh, fans that we have uh, at Cool Photo at Tools. Cool Tools. And, and in case you case have you missed have the last, missed couple, the last episodes, couple episodes, we are, we are also, also now, now on, on YouTube. YouTube. So we have, so we a, have video a video version of the podcast as, as well as the audio version. version. And you, again, you can, again, you can link, link to that. You can, you can search, search on YouTube, YouTube or you can just go to coolphototools.com 
and click on the podcast link, and it will take you to the most recent episodes. You can check out past episodes. You can also find us on iTunes, on Stitcher Radio. Uh, we're everywhere, and uh, we're trying to get uh, to be really everywhere. And, and if you uh, enjoy the show and you're, and you're listening to us from iTunes, you might give us a, a link, a click and a review there. Also on YouTube, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a like on that and, and subscribe to the uh, YouTube video version of the podcast. Okay, everybody, until next week, have an awesome photographic time. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. Sign up for our mailing list at coolphototools.com. Got a question? Send an email or MP3 audio file to info at coolphototools.com. Thanks for listening.